What is up guys and welcome back to the continuation of learning C++ and the next concept that we're going to learn is called loops or a loop and what is a loop? Well imagine that we have a task that we need to repeat multiple times so for example let's say we have a function over here that I'm going to call let's say void some function like this not functino it's some function like this let's imagine that this function will be called I don't know, let's say five times over and over, and it's not this, so I don't want to call it like this. This is how I want to call the function, so like this over here. Now imagine that, as I said, we want to call this function five times. Well, instead of typing this and this and this and this, there must be an easier way. And yes, there is. For that, we are going to use a loop. And what is a loop? Well, let me first write it down. So we're going to say here for int i which is equal to zero as long as i is less than if we want to loop five times we're going to say five i plus plus and here i am going to well do this what i just did so open close curly brackets now let me first run this then i'm gonna go and break it down line by line or, or piece by piece what did we do over here so here i'm going to say something like std colon colon c out and here i'm going to say printed so printed from loop like this and here I'm going to say end L like this to end the line. Well actually I need to, am I using namespace? Yes I am but I need to do this. So I forgot to do this. Which is, which this end line will simply make this or the next print print on the next line. Let me just show you that. So right here, if I hit the play button or the run button, it will open this application. Notice here, printed from, from loop is been printed. Pay attention over here. So we have one, we have two, three, four, and five. And notice every single one of these is printed on the next line. If I were to do this, so if I were to remove this from here, okay, just so that I can show you. And if I go over here and, well, click yes, notice where this is printed. Everything is printed here on a single line, you see? So that end line will basically print everything on the next line. But what is going on in the loop? We saw that this was printed five times. So what is, as I said, going on? Well, when you declare, declare, declare a for loop, you do it like this. You see here we have four. And here we're declaring int i and int i, it can be int b, int c, int carl, int kenny, int jonathan, baby jones or whatever. So you give it a name, but usually we say for int i and we declare it, it's equal to zero. Usually it will go like that. So because we want to loop and we'll see later on when we start working with arrays, why are we declaring it to be equal to zero? Don't worry about that. So we will cover it. But int i is equal to, zero, equal to zero and the condition is as long as i is less than five loop here so loop in between and execute the code that's here and then increment i by one you see this plus plus and this is something that we did not cover but basically if i have here int a is equal to one if i want to increase a by one i can say a is equal to a plus one and this will yield two so in this case we will add one to a and it will be equal to two but there is a shortcut for that instead of typing all of this here like this we can simply say a plus plus like c plus plus and this means take a and plus plus add one to it which means in this case as well, a will be greater for the value of one, same as we did over here. Now, going back to our loop, what do we have here? And what did, what did I put, <laughs> what did I just show? Anyways, not important, let's pretend that didn't happen. So over here, as I said, we have i is equal to zero, and then the condition as long as i is less than five, that means we are going to loop this is the condition for looping over here. So as long as i is less than five, this is how many times we are going to loop. And do you remember in our if else statements or when we did if else statements, if I test i is less than five, when when i is equal to five and we test if five is less than five, that will not evaluate to be true anymore because five is not less than five. It is equal to five, which means you see here i is zero 
and it will loop from zero up to number four because here we're incrementing it by one. And to prove that what I'm talking, I'm going to say here the value of i like this i colon and here instead of end line or actually we will end the line but here i'm going to simply pass i so that we can actually print that i which is this bad boy over here that we have created now pay attention and i'm using end line so that we can print everything on a separate line. So if I go back here and if I run our app, you will see the value of i is zero in the first iteration, then one, then two, then three, then four. This is what I was talking about because we declared i to have a value of zero first right here. And then every single iteration in the loop, in the loop, in the loop, we will increment i by one by plus plus, which means increment i by one. So in the first loop, the value of i will be zero. In the second loop, it will be one. In the third loop, it will be two. You get the point. And we will loop as long as the i value is less than five. So when i value gets to the value of five, as we just saw over here, we're not looping anymore. Because pay attention over here, we only have, so let me just go here, come on, increase this. Because we are looping, you see we have zero, we have one, two, three, and four, and that, it stops there. We don't have the value of i is five on the next line. But do you notice one thing? Still, even though we have four over here, we have looped five times. So one, two, three, four, five. We have looped five times. But since we are looping from zero or starting from zero, that's the reason i is one. Now, of course, as I said, we will see mo a more practical use of these loops when we start working with arrays because that's where they are good and when, where they come in handy. But this is just a concept that I wanted to explain to you how it works. And same here, if we have a function, so here, for example, I can take this function and I can call it over here like this and I can copy this line of code. So I can copy it and I can comment it out. And here inside of the function, I can say something like, I'm going to remove this over here because it is throwing an error. And here I can say, printed from function and save it. And if I go here and load it or run it, we'll see printed from function being printed five times. So this is a for loop. So this is a for loop. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take this over here and remove the for loop. I'm going to put the for loop like this. So the code that we put in between these curly brackets is the code that will be executed inside of the loop as long as the loop is looping. So how many times the loop loops, it will be executed that many times. But we have one we have another loop that we can use that's called a while loop. So the while loop goes like this. So while the condition do whatever it is that we need to do over here. So while true, and I'll just talk about that in a moment. I want to give a warning about the while loop that is really important for you to know. But anyways, I will cover it in a second. So you see, this is also a loop. Now a while loop takes a condition over here that needs to evaluate to be true for us to execute the code in between these curly brackets, okay? So any code that we put here between these curly brackets will be the code that's gonna be executed as long as the condition is true and the while loop is running. And that is something that I want to warn you about. Now, when you are using a while loop, and don't worry, we will see examples of this, but when you are using a while loop, you need to be careful that this condition that you put over here evaluates eventually to be false. So eventually needs to evaluate to get to the false or otherwise here you will have an infinite loop that will run forever and your computer will crash. Like literally if I just use here this line of code, for example, if I just use this line of code and run this right now, my computer will eventually crash because this will run forever. It will never stop because true will be true forever. But how can we create a condition? Well, let's say for example here, if I have int i, which is equal to zero, 
And if I set here the condition, as long as i is less than 10, for example. Now, this right here is, we are testing. So is i, essentially here we're asking is i less than 10. This will evaluate to either true or false, depending on if i is less than or if, if it's less than 10. So when i gets to the value that it's equal to 10, then this right here will stop. But if I were to run this right now, we will still have an infinite loop. Why? Well, because i is zero. We declared it over here to be zero and i will be zero forever and zero will forever be less than 10. So we need to have a condition over here that eventually this i will get to the value that it's not that it is not less than zero. So here we can say i plus plus at the bottom. So this right here, essentially what we will do is we will run this while loop as long as i is less than 10 execute the code that's over here and at the end we will increment i by one which will make this while loop have an end so if i go back now and if i run our app we will see that this is this is printed 10 times and it stopped printing you see one two three and i'm gonna not gonna count because i know it has printed 10 times so you see this is the condition over here and instead of printed from function i can say something like the the value of i is like this and here i can say i and now if i save it and run it so if i go here and i run it we will see now the value of i goes from zero up to nine including zero to nine that is 10 which means that it has run 10 times which was the condition over here as long as i is less than 10 and here we are incrementing i so essentially this is also a loop but with a slightly different construction than the for loop because in the for loop everything happens here we declare the value we set the condition and we here provide that the condition will eventually be fulfilled and not be true and then the for loop will stop looping but here in the while loop the condition that we put here needs to evaluate eventually to be false or otherwise your game or app or whatever will crash because even the strongest computer when he starts running this forever guess what he is gonna crash so in short this was about for loops and while loops and don't worry we will see this in action, we will use them in our games and so on and so forth. You know me, I do everything the practical way. So uh, yeah, fire here from awesomedudes.com. I mean, you already know that and I will see you guys in another video.